Well, some might consider me a pessimist. I like to view myself as a realist. I'm not going to look outside the window on a rainy day and convince myself that it's sunny. Just like I'm not going to turn on an app, sit around for two hours without seeing a single offer, and then pretend like it's busy. My opinion, from being in it myself, is that drivers are in for the worst year we have ever seen. For many of us, this will be the year that we're forced out of the game unless we start setting some very strong boundaries. Some people set New Year's resolutions. This video is about setting New Year's boundaries. What's going on everybody? I'm Zach Drys Fast for the Rideshare Guy, and in this video, I'm going to share various conversations that I've had with other drivers as a result of them doing or believing ridiculous things. You may already know some of the things that we're going to talk about in this list. However, I'm hoping to challenge your perception. We're going to talk about why now is the most important time ever to set these boundaries. I want to start this video with a disclaimer. I'm not trying to be rude or jerk when I say this, but if I'm being honest, support usually isn't very helpful. About a year back, I was waiting at a restaurant to pick up an order when I heard another driver on the phone with support. Now, typically I try not to be nosy, but it was obvious to me that this guy was frustrated. I overheard him telling support it was going to be an extra 30 minutes wait at the restaurant because they had just gotten the order. Considering the fact that at that point I had been at it for two and a half years, I could tell that his conversation with support didn't go the way it was supposed to, and that was largely confirmed when a couple of minutes after he got off the phone, he was still sitting there. I decided to strike up a conversation with this guy and asked him what support said. Turns out, they told him to wait for the order and that they would text the customer on his behalf. I'll get back to my conversation with this driver in a moment, but I want to pause here for a moment. This is a prime example of support dictating what we are going to do rather than the other way around. We do not work for these companies and therefore anything support says should be viewed as a suggestion and not gospel. We are in control, not them. Okay, let's get back to my conversation with the driver. I asked him if he wanted to wait 30 minutes for the order, and while I can't remember the exact dialogue, the gist of it was no, he didn't want to. No additional pay was offered, and unless that order was paying at least $15, which in my market is doubtful, that order probably wasn't worth waiting on. I showed this guy how to unassign the order, and I had him out of there in two minutes. Even if you have the order in the car already and you have a legitimate safety concern, you can still have the order unassigned. Call support on your way back to the restaurant and tell them why they are going to unassign you. To summarize, far too many drivers view a conversation with support like talking to a manager at a W-2 job, and that is the worst way to approach support. Remember, we are the boss, not them. In my opinion, in 2024, there aren't going to be enough quality orders to begin with to waste your time with support, and the only time you should be contacting them is to cover your own ass. This brings me into my second talking point. Things are harder than they used to be, and they're likely only going to get worse. All right, this one isn't an in-person conversation, but I've had thousands of drivers tell me over the last year and a half that they're working longer hours for less. This has been the trend for a while, and I can't see that a new year would suddenly reverse that trend and all of a sudden drivers are going to start making a shitload of money. Here's the thing with these apps. They try to spin things in a positive light that convinces everybody except the drivers that things are going well for us. In my opinion, 2024 is going to be a year of even fewer orders, less tips, and more squeeze. Matter of fact, I want you to let me know in the comments what your minimum dollar per mile ratio is. Mine is $2. I never want to see you take a loss on an order, and the gig apps will never offer up the fact that the offer screen payout is about double what you're actually going to make after the order's done when you factor in expenses. Take a good look at the offer screen, and then factor in if that order is actually worth it for you. Never factor in your acceptance rate. And a good rule of thumb is to cut the pay in half because that's what you're going to walk away with. Think like a business owner, not an employee. The next thing that I want to touch on is wait times. These apps will never tell you that waiting around at a restaurant for an order will cut into your profitability. If you get an offer for a restaurant that's frequently known to take forever for the order to come up, make damn good and sure you're being paid enough to be there. Time is money. I want you to let me know in the comments how long you are willing to wait at a restaurant for an order. For me, it's typically five minutes per $5. Unfortunately, sometimes restaurants just don't respect our time, and as a result, I've got a small handful that I've blacklisted. Let me know if you've done the same. It's not just restaurant wait times that kill our profitability. Sometimes it's just slow. We all know those days. 
Sometimes orders just slowly trickle in, and we find ourselves waiting 20, 30, 40 minutes in between offers. But there's also those days that are seemingly slow for no reason at all. Are you better off waiting another hour for an offer that may or may not be worth your time? Or are you better off going home and packing it in? Here's a challenge for you. If you are going to pack it in, find a way to make up the money that you lost by not driving from home. Here's a suggestion for you. Look around your home. What do you have of value that you no longer need or use? Got it? Great. Sell it on Facebook Marketplace. Offload it and make a few bucks. I want you to really give this a lot of thought. How can you keep making money when orders are drying up? Let me know what you come up with in the comments. The next one I want to touch on is acceptance rate. Let me know in the comments if you think we are truly independent contractors. Personally, I think we're some weird bastardized version and we don't fall neatly into any box. Regardless, we're damn sure not W-2 employees and they should never be calling the shots. That should always be us. And that should include acceptance rate. Here's the problem with acceptance rate. They've used it against us so effectively. While we technically can decline an order and not be penalized for it, we're penalized in other ways, like not being able to get hours in many markets around the country. First of all, screw that. That's where multi-apping comes in. They should be competing for our time instead of the other way around. Their business model doesn't work without us. Here's what they'll never tell you. Your acceptance rate exists for them, not to reward you. Now, this may piss some people off and plenty of you are going to disagree with me, but the higher your acceptance rate, the lower your standards, and that's fact. A true independent contractor would never be shown their acceptance rate. Ever. Full stop. Let me know if you agree with me. I want to wrap this one up with another quick story. About two and a half years ago, I was at a restaurant waiting for an order, and I struck up a conversation with another driver. Turns out, she was there waiting to pick up a double no-tip order. In hindsight, I probably could have reacted a little better, but I was dumbfounded and asked her why in the hell she would accept it, let alone wait for it. I will never forget her response. She said, I'm a college student. DoorDash is the only thing that works with my schedule, and I can't afford to get fired. Fired. Shit, that's the first time I've ever heard that word used by a driver. This interaction caught me off guard, and if I'm being honest, it kind of pissed me off. I wasn't mad at the girl. I was mad at the gig apps for allowing her to believe that she could lose her source of income for not taking crappy orders. I ended up spending a few more minutes with her, giving her a rundown of IC versus W2. And hopefully she took my advice, because if she did, her dollar per mile ratio would have shot through the roof. The final thing I want to talk about in this video is how customers will try to scam us, and how the companies likely won't have our backs. Scammers suck. They lie, they say they never got their order, they get a refund, and we get contract violations. Not once have I ever seen something published for drivers from DoorDash or Uber Eats educating us about customer scams. Not once. Unfortunately, if we do this work long enough, we are all going to fall victim to a shitty person with no morals. The problem is, it's hard to prove that we weren't in the wrong and harder yet to get the gig app support. The gig apps would have drivers believe that driving is like living in a fairy tale where everybody's kind and honest and respectful and nobody would ever take a shot at you. But the truth is, happens all the time. Let me ask you this. How many times do you think a support rep has ever had a customer claim that they didn't deliver the order? Never, because they don't do the work. When we have something go sideways, we're talking to somebody who's trying to handle a very small number of issues. And a customer lying is an issue that they don't handle well. I can't even begin to tell you the number of drivers who have told me that they handed an order to the customer at their front door and still got a contract violation. The gig apps will never tell you this, but the fact of the matter is, it's completely on us to prove that we did nothing wrong. Fortunately, for this one, there is a fairly simple solution. Get a body camera. Not only can they help you prove that you did what you were supposed to do, but there's some really good ones that have infrared so they can see at night. I'll put a link in the description for Display Ride. They're one of the best out there and they include cell service, so the driver can upload their videos to the cloud immediately. On top of the very reasonable price, you'd be protecting yourself and supporting the rideshare guy in the process. Click the link in the description. Is there anything that I'm missing? What will gig apps never tell drivers? Let me know in the comments. Well guys, that is going to about wrap up the video. If you haven't done so yet, 
please do consider pressing the like button and subscribing to the Rideshare Guy. You can catch my videos here every Tuesday. If this video resonated with you, check out this video next where I discuss whether delivery is dying. I'm Zach Drysfast with the Rideshare Guy. Take care.